Candy from Quilt Vine. Welcome to part two of our orange peel sew along. Now you should have all of your orange peels cut out and ready to go. If you're doing the raw edge, the frayed edge, you'll just have your fabric orange peels cut out. And if you're doing the fusible, you'll have them um, cut out with the fusible already applied to them. And you need your five inch background blocks cut. So once everything's cut, Today, we're gonna to show you how to put your orange, peel, orange peels on to your background fabrics. Today, we're gonna to start with the, the frayed edge. I have my orange peels cut out, just the fabric. There's no fusible on them. And, um, cause we're gonna have want those edges to fray. And what we need to apply these to our backgrounds is either some some white school glue, something washable. I've got Elmer's or I've got this, this off brand or, um, you know, a, a white glue stick. You just don't want the purple glue stick. You want something that's going to wash out. These will wash out. You don't want a permanent uh, glue. So then we need our orange peels, our glue and our background fabrics. I'm going with white for my background fabric. Uh, for my background, I'm going to take it and fold it on the diagonal and I can just finger press it or you can hit it with the iron, it doesn't matter because you want to be able to see that, that diagonal line. Then I'm going to take my orange peel and I'm going to apply some glue. This is just a piece of freezer paper so I don't get glue on my cutting mat or whatever, or my table, wherever I'm working. So I'm going to put little dabs of glue all the way around near the edge. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that on my background on the diagonal. And I'm just going to eyeball so I don't, you know, because I want to have it centered on the diagonal. I don't want it, you know, coming the whole way to the edge because of the seam allowance. We want to have those points. It's not going to come the whole way to the edge. And then I'm just going to hit it with the iron and that will set the glue. It'll dry the glue and it's on there. It's not going anywhere. So you can see how it doesn't come to the edge, but because of our quarter inch seam, that's the way we want it. We don't want to sew off those points. So there's one done. Now I'm going to show you again, the next one I'm going to show you with glue stick. And then this is all we're doing this week. We're not going to start sewing yet. If you're doing the, the one that will fray, this is all we're doing is we're gluing them on. And you know, if you're only doing like something small or a pillow, you'll be done in no time and you'll just have to wait another week till the rest of us catch up with you. And if you're doing a big one, you're probably gonna be behind, but that's okay. This is fun. So there I go and I, I just finger press it to get my, my diagonal. Then I take my orange peel and this one I'm gonna show you with the glue stick. So you want the paper on the background and I'm just gonna put the glue stick on. The thing with the glue stick, with using it with the frayed edge, see, it's already starting those edges to fray, which is fine. I just find when I'm doing it without anything on the background that's not treated, I don't usually like it to start fraying already. See how it's starting to fray already? And then I take it and I go to my background, centered on that diagonal. I also feel like it kind of, because I was pulling on it, it maybe kind of distorted it a little bit. So the glue stick is fine. And like I told you last week when we were cutting them out, for the frayed edge ones, it doesn't have to be anything exact because the edges are gonna fray anyway. But for these, I really do prefer using um, the, white, the white school glue because it's not pulling on the edges. So let's do one more. Just do a few little dots around. Okay, take it to my background. Get it on there where I want it. And seeing with it wet, it's easy to move around if you don't quite exactly have it where you want it. And then we're gonna hit it with the iron. And it is set and good to go. So once again, if this is what we're doing this, if you're doing the, the frayed edge one, we're just gluing them onto the background this week. Next up, we're going to be working with our um, orange peels that had the fusible on the back. And so um, 
This is still has the paper on the back. I don't know if you saw this last week or not, but sometimes it's hard getting that paper off and you don't want to be sitting here messing with the edges and getting those edges frayed for, because with the fusible, we do not want our edges frayed. So I like to take a, a straight pin and I just score the back of it a little bit, just one little score. I don't know if you can see it there, how I scored it. You're gonna be careful, you know, you don't want it to come through to show on the front and just bend it back and that paper peels right off. So you just wanna score it a little bit and then you can peel all your papers off. Now we're gonna take all of our orange peels and we've taken all the paper off. And then we've got our whole stack of backgrounds. And I decided on white. I know I had auditioned, I don't know how many different backgrounds and I decided to go with white. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna fold it on the diagonal. It might be easier just to hit it with yarn real quick. So you can see that diagonal line. And then we're just gonna center those up there. And once again, hit it with the iron. This one, you can iron a little bit longer than when you put the paper on the back. You know, that one doesn't show up real well. What I like to do is I generally do, especially I have so many of them, I need 192 for the throw size. I try to do things like an assembly line might be the way to put it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to see how many I can fit on my mat here. So I've got, we'll press a few of these. Maybe this won't be quicker. Maybe it will be quicker, but we'll, we'll try it. I probably only really have room for about six of them here anyway. And if you're like me, sometimes, you know, I have that close enough is good enough attitude. Maybe you don't want to press these diagonal lines. It depends on how, um, how perfect you want it to be. Cause let's get this going now and see how quick we can get things done. So what I like to do is I've got it on there, I've got it placed. I'll set my iron on it and I'll go grab my other one or the next one. And then while I'm getting this one in place, that's pressing nice and good. I'll set it on there, go grab another one. As long as you've got them handy that you don't want to set on there too terribly long. See, and I go grab another one. Get these out of the way. Get this assembly line going here, right? And anyway, this is all we're gonna do this week. We're not sewing this week. We have 192 of these to do. Like I said, if you're doing something small, you might kind of think you want to work ahead. I don't recommend it. I think you'd be smart to wait and see how I would show you how I, uh, how I stitch them down. And I'll show you also how we stitch down the, uh, for the raw edge or you know the ragged edge the raveled edge i'll be demonstrating both of those but that will be next week so as you see here as i if i'm not pressing that diagonal line i'm saving a little time but and i don't know if i i want to um forfeit that accuracy or not i think they're close enough to the edges that you can pretty much eyeball it because I like to keep them going like this. I don't want to take the time because uh, anybody that knows me, you know, I get her done and close enough is good enough. You know, if you've got to sit there and everything's got to be perfect, um, that's how things just don't get done. But I know a lot of you are like that, where it's like, oh, if it's not perfect, you're not happy with it. And I, I understand that. So you got to do what's good for you. So that's what we're doing this week. We're just 
putting these on, we're fusing them down or gluing them down. And that's it for the week. Uh, please share your photos on Facebook or in my email and have a great week.